repairing a long call that is near full loss. And once more onto the breach. And why do I say once more onto the breach? We had a presentation just under a year ago, managing a bought call that is near full loss. You can see that full YouTube link here. When the archive is posted, there'll be a link to that presentation that'll pop up. In that discussion, we talked about ideas such as rolling down the long call to try to get a better break even, creating a vertical spread, a bear call credit or a bull call debit, which won't work in this scenario, but creating a bear call credit to try to get back to break even based on your expectation of the security. Looking to create a calendar spread by continuing to sell a few weeks out or month by month against a longer term long call to try to get back to break even. Using a butterfly repair or rolling down the position and applying these others, the creating a vertical, adjusting as a calendar or butterfly repair. Now, you can also find that video under the long call playlist on our YouTube channel as well as one of the managements. But. New situations arise. Aline emailed me earlier this morning. She says, I have 20, 175 calls, June 16th, 2023. This is for Amazon. The average price is $540 each. I think Amazon closed today at around $99. Now, the loss of today is about $10,511. She has the 20 contracts because she purchased it before the split that occurred. And she says, hopefully you can come up with a trade that can offset this, hopefully. Well, we're going to take a look at power options and the tools available in power options to illustrate some ideas and see if there's a repair even possible for these June 175 calls that have an average price of $5.40, but are now only 15 cents a piece. So lost there about $10,500. So let's navigate over to the power options suite of tools. We're just looking at the main home view now. We're going to cut into the My Portfolio tool, go directly to the portfolios. Now, in the portfolio view, we've added the positions we're going to talk about today from some of the emails that came in. Here we see Eileen's position. The 16th of June, 175 call, 20 contracts purchased at a cost of 540. Total cost $10,800 into long calls on Amazon. Well, at the close of today, they're now worth 20 cents. So the loss is $10,400 or 96.3% what's invested in the long call. Highly doubtful that any management techniques are going to be available. But let's just check and see what we have as well. So we're going to use the edit more information button here. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that blocked out. We're going to use the edit more information button here. Go to position actions as always, and as I'm tracking positions in the portfolio, we'll link to the position analysis screen. Now, this will always give you a breakdown of your current position, things such as current midpoint, the delta is essentially zero, time value left in price, essentially zero because it's deep, deep out of the money. Our profit and loss chart here, we can see that we're near that full loss as we mentioned. More details in the current liquidation value and future expiration value. There was a rollout opportunity shown here earlier, but now it is gone. So no rollout opportunities appear. We're suggested to go to the profit and loss chart to do some manual adjustments, and that's what we're going to take a look at. As before, as I mentioned, some of the things discussed in that previous webinar, the first one was rolling down. Let's say that you had a stock position and you bought Amazon at 175. It's now trading at, oh, I'm sorry, closed at 102.24. Well, when it closed at 102.24, one of the common ways as just a stock trader you'd look to repair the position is buy another 100 shares, 200 shares if you had the capital at 102.24 to sort of cut your cost basis down to maybe 135, 137. But this is a call option. But we can do the same thing. Where's our current position stand? At June expiration, we have a break even of 18040. Probably not going to see a break even price until we get up to the 150 range. Well, that's out to April, but still, we're not going to see sort of break even at that time. We can evaluate what the break even would be, you know, 10 days from now, 20 days from now using the calculate feature. But let's take it as it is. We know we're near a full loss on the position. 
break evens 18040 or stocks at 102 are far gone, far and away from reaching a break even. So just as you might average down a stock, you can average down the call. How do you do that? You could just buy more calls and ladder it down. We always prefer just the full action. We're going to take the realized loss here of that $10,000. We're going to sell to close our June 16, 2023 options. I'm going to scroll very far here. I apologize for that. All single digits. There we go. We're going to get about 20 cents. Not that this is the best move, but we're just going to show what would happen. And Lean's going to have to do some of this analysis on her own. But we're going to roll down here now. It's about, let's just say, the 110 call. Now, I may not have to do 20 contracts in this case. I may only have to put in an extra 10 or an extra 20 to get a better, I'm sorry, an extra 10 contracts or eight contracts to do it. But we are going to sell the initial 20. And let's just take a look at what the new break even would be. Realizing the full loss of $10,500 and putting almost another $10,000 in. Just like averaging down the stock, you've got to put in more money in order to realize a better break even. So we're just going to do that here. Simulate selling to close at 20 cents. So we're going to realize the loss of 520. We're going to pay about 705 for the 20 contracts at 110. So we're doubling our cost basis into the position from 10,800 up to 24,450. But now we have a new break even of 122.23. We kept the same June expiration to give ourselves time for the stock to move in our desired direction. And that's what the roll down can do for you. We improve the break even. What are the drawbacks? We have to have the money to increase the cost basis to average down number one. Number two, we can lose two and a half times more than we're losing right now. Remember, if we liquidated right now, we'd have a loss of $10,500. We enter this adjustment here, and the stock continues to move down, continue moves down, continues to move down. We could lose $24,450 as we get closer and closer to June expiration. Pros and cons of every adjustment. But this is one opportunity. What is the whole purpose? Of an adjustment to take a losing trade bet to a better potential and expectancy of returning to a profit with a lower break even. Now, I get a lot of questions, as you can imagine. A lot of questions are I'm losing on this long call, or I'm losing on my stock, or hey, I'm losing on my covered call position. What can I do to limit the losses? I say, oh, well, you can buy a put option on the position, you can add another option leg and cost basis to the position to average down. I say, no, how can I generate income? and improve the situation where I don't have as much risk or I cancel the risk. That's not how it works, okay? You, you picked a position that you were in and you had the obligation and you had the risk inherent, it got away from you and that happens. That's why we wanna have a trading plan. But let's talk about option two. So that's just rolling down. Could I pull in income and turn this losing trade into a winning trade? Perhaps, but what would I need to do? I need to create a premium that's greater than the cost basis of this initial position of 540. So once again, let's take a look at the June expiration series. And in June, I want at least 540. The 115 call doesn't do it, but the 110 does. I can get a 695, 710 premium for selling the 110 call. Let's go ahead and do that. What is this going to create? Well, I'm selling a lower strike call, same number of contracts. We're creating a vertical spread. We're creating a bear call. Creating a bull call debit won't make any sense right now because we have to buy a higher call than the 175. Still have 0.1% expectancy of turning into a profit. Just about what we have with the 175 call right now doing nothing. So we sell that. We get about, let's just call it 705. Let's be nice to ourselves. So now we have a net credit of about $1.60 times 20 contracts, about $3,300. Well, that looks pretty good. If the stock now stays below $110, heh, pretty close. But why did we take the $110? It's the only one out in June that's relatively out of the money, not as much as near as what we'd want, that has the premium higher than the initial cost basis we paid. Now we have a bear call credit. 
If the stock stays below 110, both calls expire worthless. We keep the 3300, but in order to do this, we have to cover the difference in the strike prices, the margin requirement, $65 times 20 contracts or roughly $130,000. This of course is the new maximum risk. Well, 130,000 minus that 3300 net credit we'd achieve but $126,000, this would have to be on hold in your account to cover the difference in strike prices times the net credit. So the loss here is just about five, oh, I'm sorry, it's about 10 times of where we are right now, about six times what we would be if we just rolled down. And it's based on the expectation that the stock stays below 110. Amazon has been moving up since the bottom. So maybe it isn't a bullish trend, and this isn't the best idea. Now, the thought comes in is, could I create a synthetic, a strange synthetic long stock position by selling an out-of-the-money put for June with the same premium? That one doesn't typically do what you want. It's not really a synthetic long stock. It is in the sense that when you buy a call and you sell a put at the same strike price, you see a thin synthetic stock position. But going here, we just have to go to, yeah, I'll go here, the 96. Okay, we're going to go ahead and sell that. But what's going to happen here is the long call doesn't cover the obligation of this 96 strike put times 20 contracts. So once again, the margin requirement is extensional. We're covering the cash secured put. We get a credit of 1850 and the break even drops to 9507. That looks pretty good. But all through this range, we have a small profit, as you're seeing, of about that the 1850, the net credit. As the stock stays between the strike prices, the 96 put expires worthless. The 175 call expires worthless. But to do this, you've got to put up the capital, cover 20 contracts of the naked put position. And to be cash secured, we're talking about $192,000 an exorbitant amount of margin, an exorbitant amount of extra risk. True, that risk could only be realized if Amazon went to zero going forward. Now, the butterfly repair. Oh, I'm sorry, the calendar. That did come up as a rollout opportunity. I meant to show that first. What, what is the calendar? Well, calendar spread is I buy one option out in time and I sell one near term, whether it's above or below, in the money or out of the money. There's different ways to create the different calendars. Doing this kind of calendar where my bought call that's further out of time is at a higher strike than the one I'm selling, and I'm going to try to sell it multiple times between now and that far out expiration, is, is essentially a bearish position when you do it this way. But let's go out 14 days. And let's just take, again, a slightly out of the money call. And the 110 is about 190. Let's go to the 109. I'm looking for something around $2. So every 14 days, I'm going to try to get $2 in premium. And this position might not look that attractive at first. And it's not supposed to because it's a repair. So it's a guaranteed loss here of about 5969 And I would want the stock, believe it or not, to stay below 90, I'm sorry, 109, that new sold call strike price. Hope is that call expires worthless. I knock the cost basis down, and then for the next 14 days, out to the 24th of February, I try to collect another $2, depending on where the stock is. Maybe I'm at the 115, maybe I'm at the 111, uh, maybe I'm down here at the 105. And I'm trying to knock down the cost basis. But again, maximum risk. There's not as much total requirement here that's necessary on the position, but that also does depend on your broker and how they read this structure sort of a debit spread position. You've collected premium against your original cost, but they may require you to put up the margin between the 109 and the 175, and that's where we get back up in those 134,000 requirements on the positions. The idea is you, you want the stock to stay below this short call. You want it to expire and then just continue to sell every 14 to 20 days against it to try to get the premium, knock the premium down to zero in that case. 
hard to manage. Have to watch it, just like the bear call. You can't let it go too far above the short call. If it does, you have to roll the call to a next strike and roll the call and roll the short call. And if you're doing that at a debit, you're going to try to do it as a credit. But every time you roll, you're not getting as much premium as you expected against the cost basis. Though, if the stock is moving up and you're rolling that short call out of the way, this long call might start to see some increase. But remember, every 14 days you write this in each cycle you go through, well, this option is essentially at zero, so we don't have to worry about too much time decay, but that's going to be getting lower and lower and lower. So it's more time intensive. Calendar spread, time intensive, kind of a pun. But yes, you're going to have to watch it more carefully, just as you'd have to watch the bear call credit spread repair more carefully. Now, the butterfly repair. In this situation, and you may not be able to do this in your account depending on what account you have, you might not be able to do the bear call credit spread repair, even though it didn't look that great in my opinion, based on what was there. But in the butterfly position, what we can do is we can sell twice as many calls at a lower strike price. We can sell 40 calls at a lower strike price and then buy 20 lower. Essentially, we'll have a bear call credit spread with a bull call debit spread. And what's that going to give us? That's going to give us the butterfly position. So played with some numbers earlier. I'm not going to play around with this. It's up to uh, Eileen to do a little bit more work here to see which ones work. I want something that's out of the money where the stock won't breach. And I don't want to be too far below the short call strike prices. I'm sorry, my long call strike price because of the margin requirement. But I want some decent premium. So I think what I'm going to do is go with sell the 125s at 270. And at the same time, I'm going to buy 20. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Don't want to do 100. I don't want to do the 95, but it's close. We'll try the 95. It's not as deep apart. So we're going 50 points down from our 175 call and then 30 points to this lower call. A lower call is going to cost more and create a bull call debit spread. But we're only going to buy 20 here, and we're going to sell 40 here. This worked earlier today, but no promises it's going to work again. And that's what I was looking for. We have sort of a broken butterfly position. We have a break even at 109.84 and 140.16 with the spread. Now, again, this is going to cost us a total debit up front of 29,690. We're getting a small credit by selling these 40 calls. So we have a bear call credit spread. 20 contracts a piece selling my apologies, selling the 125 and buying the 175. Combined with a bull call debit spread selling the 125s and buying the 95s. Major increase in the cost basis on the position. And why is this max risk 69960 if I only have a debit here? That debit is what you're paying to do this repair. And then you have to cover the 20 contracts times 50 strike difference. But it does take into account, of course, the fact that you have calls here protecting the 20 shorts. So it's not 40 short, it's 20. What does this give you? This gives you a pretty good range to break even. And the trade-off again is what? Increased debit into the position. Increased maximum risk because of the margin requirement. But max profit here, $30,000 at 125. That's a heck of a lot better than a $10,000 loss, but it's going to cost something and it's going to risk something extra. The maximum risk is up here. You could still risk $30,000 to the downside if the stock falls below $95 by June expiration. <sighs> a little bit tough. Now, we've gone far enough with this one because we have those three other emails that came in, as I mentioned, plus three other questions that have come in directly. So what did we just review? We just reviewed the potential of rolling down, creating the vertical with the bear call, mm, didn't really like it. Adjusting as a calendar requires more effort, more time to watch it. Butterfly repair is a possibility. And another possibility, 
in all of these is doing step one, rolling down to maybe that 110 or 125 as we showed, and then applying the other management techniques. But Eileen's gonna have to take that analysis on her own to see what she can do. But that is sort of the concepts that we could do even if a structure is near full loss, but nothing is for free. There's no offsetting trade when you've entered a long call or a long put and it's near 90 to 95% loss. As we've shown, there are repairs and elaborate repairs that are available and simple repairs that could get you back to break even faster. But everything is a trade-off. There's no free money. There's no immediate repair for every strategy. And I'm sorry, where I'm going with that, of course, is just for a quick basic review. What did we sort of see here that rolling down is going to increase the cost basis, but lower the break even to that 122 range. The vertical spread got to break even, but we've changed the whole mode of the situation to bearish. We would have wanted the stock to stay below 110, and we'd have that huge margin requirement of 65 points times 20 contracts. The calendar spread was initially shown in the rollouts. It wasn't there by 4 p.m. You'd have to continue to manage it, but you may have that high margin requirement and you have to watch it more carefully. You don't want the stock to go above the short call strike price by too much. Now you're forcing yourself to roll too often and you're negating the premium that you were taking in. The butterfly, feasible, gave a decent range to break even as we saw, 109 to 140 with just that one example, but you could toggle between different examples using the power options tools as I did, but it's also going to come with an extremely high margin. And then, of course, you could roll down and do the butterfly or the vertical spread. Also feasible, but it's going to apply all of those. You're going to have the increased cost to roll down the long call, and you're going to maybe require some margin or additional increased cost based on the structure of the repair after you rolled down, which already increased the cost basis. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. The repairs that we just discussed about today would be dependent on what your expectations were for the stock going forward. Maybe we wanna throw that all out the window because earnings are coming up on February 2nd, which I believe is Tuesday. Are your expectations bullish? Are they bearish? Is it a crapshoot? Because we've seen so many stocks recently some that have come out with good earnings, but poor forward-looking announcements and the stocks dropped. Some came out with bad earnings and good outlook and moved up. Some came out bad with both and moved up because it wasn't as bad as the market expected. Some came out good with both, meaning both the earnings, the profit, and outlook going forward, but it didn't meet Wall Street's expectations and they still dropped. So when we look at the repair, then we have to think, how would an unexpected move against our initial expectations affect this trade? And is that risk worth it to me? Maybe it's better to wait until after the earnings. See what the stock does after the earnings are announced on February 2nd and evaluate these opportunities or other opportunities at that time based on your new expectation. You're already at a 96, 97% loss. If the stock falls down to 80, You've only lost another two or $300 more than you have right now. There's just not a lot of sense maybe in trying one of those repairs that increase the risk to the downside or the cost basis up to $29,000. You're expecting a bullish move and the earnings bring Amazon back down to $88 next week. Now you're down $24,000, $23,000. That's not where you want to be. So you're already at this 96, 97% loss. Maybe it's best to pass through the earnings, see the outcome and then make a decision from there. And again, I just want to give a disclaimer here. Repair ideas discussed are not guarantees of turning a losing trade into a winning trade. Each adjustment carries with it a new increased risk and potentially higher monetary requirement. Losses beyond current liquidation value could be realized as many as five or six times the current liquidation loss. In one example, we saw almost 10 times, almost 12 times really. Always have a trading plan on the initial position, react accordingly, it is best not to let any long option position, any credit spread or debit spread, if possible, reach beyond a 50% of the maximum loss you could take. You want to look to manage it before then, if possible, or exit the trade to minimize losses. Even though we don't want to take a 40 to 50% loss, it's better than a 96, 97, 98% loss of what we invested into the position.